Okay friends, it's time to get started on our replacement. Now this part right here is gonna be located on the transfer case actuator motor. So with that said, we're gonna make our way under the center of the vehicle and access the motor itself. Once you're under here, you wanna go ahead and apply some support directly underneath the transfer case. If you're using a jack of some sort, something metal, make sure you don't damage it. Typically it's a good idea to use wood in between the jack and the transfer case. Now that I have a little bit of pressure on that, we're gonna continue on to removing our 18 millimeter headed bolt. The 18 millimeter headed bolt is on the passenger side of this transfer case bracket. To gain access to this, typically you can use an 18 millimeter socket, a swivel, and a long extension. Now if you need to, you can either raise or lower the transfer case to be able to pull this bolt out. Now once you have that bolt so it's loose, we're going to continue on to our two 13 millimeter headed bolts that are on the passenger side. You'll find one directly up in this hole. We'll make our way up in here with our 13. Now that we have both of those out, let's do the same thing on the driver's side. Now once I get my socket on this last bolt, I'm gonna make sure I'm holding the cross beam so it can't fall down and potentially hurt me. Let's get that 18 millimeter bolt out of there. Now we can take this and hang it down. Now so we can have easier access, let's make our way to the heat shield. You're gonna find one 10 millimeter headed bolt for this corner. We'll remove that bolt and lower this down. With all that lowered and out of the way, we have a nice clear view of the actuator motor. Now there is going to be some wiring that you're going to have to disconnect. We'll start with the smaller wire. For that, I'll use a small pick. Right along the driver's side of this connector, you're going to find a clip that you can carefully get underneath, gently pry it up, and separate the wiring. Every time you disconnect an electrical connector, take a peek. If you see any funny colors, it's corrosion, and that would need to be dealt with. Now let's move along to our larger connector. To remove this connector, I'm going to come over this area and press it in. As I do this, this side right here will lift up, and then I should be able to separate this. If when you press on this area, it doesn't lift far enough, just come in through here and gently pry. Corrosion check, set it aside. All right, at this point, we can start removing the motor assembly from the transfer case. To do that, you're gonna find four E10 mounting bolts. Let's go ahead and remove each of those. Essentially, those are inverted torques. Looks like a star. Start with this one that's up high.
Now, as we remove this final bolt, make sure you're holding on to the actuator so it doesn't fall and potentially hurt you. Let's grab onto that actuator and carefully remove it from the transfer case. Now with our motor on the bench, we're gonna get ready to start replacing this. This is gonna be located behind this entire panel right here. With that said, we're gonna to have to come right in the center. In the center, you're gonna find that there's a locking clip. For that clip, generally you can use some snap ring pliers, grab onto it, spread it, and lift it up and off of that shaft. Once you have it off of the shaft, we'll go ahead and remove that and we'll continue by removing the plate from the assembly. Removing this clip can be one of the hardest things you do about this job. Now with that clip off of there, we can continue on to this plate as I had mentioned before. If you were to look along the casing, pretty close to where the plate is, you're gonna find you have a whole bunch of dimples that are around it. Each one of those dimples is an area where the casing was driven into the plate to hold it in place. So with that said, we just wanna take a hammer and a punch and carefully try to bonk this away. Each one of these dimples is holding the cover on, so it's important to make sure you go ahead and knock all of them back. Something that I want to mention is you don't want to break the casing. If you break the casing, there's a possibility moisture can make its way in and you're going to ruin the motor. For this, I'll use a hammer and punch. That one looks good. Now I'll do the same all the way around the casing. Now once you have all those tabs pressed back as far as you can, continue on with a small pocket screwdriver. All I want to do is gently get in between the cover and the casing and gently start prying it. Give that a quick inspection, make sure it's still reusable, not torn, worn, or damaged in any way, and set that aside. Now with that cover off of here, let's pause with the internals and move along to removing the motor from the assembly. 
For it, you're going to find four T25 mounting screws. We'll remove all four and then carefully separate this. There's our last one. Now we're going to go ahead and start separating this. As I start pulling it out, pay attention to this area in here. Once you have this apart, it's important to make sure that you inspect your bearing. If you see any rust or debris in this area, that's something that you're going to want to take care of. If there's rust, generally it means that the seal right along here isn't working properly. Give it a quick inspection. If it looks torn or worn, you're gonna wanna either replace it with a new seal or even use some gasket maker of some sort. Now at this point, I can set the motor aside and we can get back to work on our cog. We'll just give this a quick inspection as well. That looks good. Now that we have all that off of there, let's continue on with a small magnet. If you were to get down inside this area, you're gonna find that you have a small washer We'll set this aside because we will be reusing it. The next thing you want to do is grab onto this and carefully lift it up and off. It's possible that as you start lifting it, it feels as though it gets caught a little bit. If that's the case, just use some persistence and you should be able to slide it off of there. Now that this is out of the actuator assembly, let's continue taking this apart. I'll carefully get in between these two areas and gently separate it. make my way around. Give that a little wiggle. Now once we have this cleaned, we'll use some high temperature molly grease inside this area. Now we can start placing our brand new cog on there. Just go ahead and start pressing it on. If it feels as though it needs to be twisted at the same time, just rotate it accordingly. That slid right on perfectly. We'll set this aside. Now we can start cleaning up the rest of our apparatus here. You wanna pay attention to any of the existing grease or debris that's inside this area, especially along where the shaft is. We're gonna make sure we clean this entire area. Also, if you were to move along to this area that has the electrical wiring harness onto it, you can go ahead and pull that off of there. Have a look from the back side. It's important to make sure that this is clean, but when you clean it, you don't want to use something like a parts cleaner. You want to make sure you only use electronics cleaner. Now with that said, you also want to make sure you clean inside this area. Keep in mind, there is a gasket on this, so if you were to use parts cleaner, it could potentially swell or get damaged. With that said, I'll carefully remove this gasket. Give it a quick inspection, make sure it's still soft and pliable and it doesn't look cracked or worn or damaged in any way. Set that aside. Now we can continue cleaning this entire thing. Now once you have it cleaned, continue on with your high temperature molly grease. We're going to make sure that we coat this entire shaft. As you coat the shaft, also make your way down to the base right near where the shaft is. Once you have that well lubricated, we're gonna make sure we pile on a whole bunch of grease inside this groove where the shaft for the motor comes down through. Now I'll turn it up on its side. We'll lubricate this entire area as well. Let's grab onto our cog. We're gonna make sure we lubricate all of the teeth on this. I'll also lubricate this area. We've pretty much lubricated it already on the base here. It couldn't hurt to have a little extra. Now we can take this and we'll slide it directly over the shaft. Go ahead and work that around. Continue on with your washer. Slide that down in position up against the gear. Now we can take our locking clip, 
and an 11 millimeter deep socket. Essentially, you wanna have a socket that can fit right over that shaft. Line the clip up with the shaft and then drive it on there with your socket. You want to make sure it's squared up against the shaft. We'll give this a loving bonk. Now, once you feel as though you have it on there, it's important to make sure it is secured on. I'm just going to go ahead and give this a spin with my pocket screwdriver, and I'm trying to pry it off. If it falls right off, it's not on there properly. This is definitely locked into the channel that's on the shaft, so we can move along. Now we can take our rubber seal, we'll put it back on here. Take your electrical apparatus, slide it right on. Now let's move back over to the motor. We'll carefully remove the seal from this. Give it a quick inspection to make sure it's soft and pliable. Wipe it down with a clean rag and set it aside. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is clean off any of the dust or debris that's inside this motor area. Once again, it's a good idea to make sure you use an electronics cleaner, not necessarily a parts cleaner. We'll make sure this is nice and clean. We'll make sure the base is clean as well. And then we can get ready to reinstall our seal and then install this onto the apparatus. Now the next thing I like to do is take that gasket and we'll put it right onto the base here. After you have it on the base, we're gonna continue on with this piece and our motor. Now looking at this piece right here, the areas that I want you to pay attention to is right here and the other side. These are considered wear items and they're supposed to be spring loaded. The importance of this is that once you start sliding this on, you're gonna to need to make sure you push each of these back so they can slide around the bearing and then over this area as well. It can feel a little bit difficult, but overall you should be able to do it. As I slide it in, I'm gonna use the bearing that's on the shaft to press in the one that's closest to me. After I have that in there, I'll continue on by pressing in the other one, slide it over the bearing, and then we'll continue on by doing the same exact thing for the inner portion. Just go ahead and press it off to the side a little bit. Squeeze that in, squeeze this one in, and then slide it in. Now, once you have it on there, I want you to look at the base of this. You're gonna find that you have three little pitons that protrude out. Each of those little pitons needs to fit into their corresponding holes on the base itself. So with that said, let's continue on by sliding this into place. Slide this right on there, press it down. All I wanna do here is start in all four of my mounting bolts. Once all four of them are started, you can continue snugging them up. Make sure these are nice and tight. Now we can set this aside for now. We'll continue on with our plate. For this, you wanna make sure you clean it down extremely well. This entire black area is considered the seal. 
Also, the center area right here is also a seal. You want to make sure you wipe it down. Give it a close inspection for any tears or wear. We'll wipe down the outside as well. That seal looks good. Let's grab our actuator assembly and our base. I'm gonna use a little bit more of that high temperature molly grease and just come right around the center area here of the seal. That's gonna help it slide over. Now we're gonna take this base with the seal facing up and away and carefully place it down onto the assembly. Press it down so it's as flat as possible and secured. After that, the next thing you want to do is continue on with your hammer and punch and try to peen down each of those areas that you had to peen away to remove the plate. Double check to make sure your base is completely secured and now we can get back over to the vehicle. Back over at the vehicle, let's continue on by wiping this down. Now we can put our motor in place. Once you have it pressed on there, continue on with your mounting bolts. We're gonna start in each of the four mounting bolts by hand. Make sure they all start in at least a few threads and then you can tighten them up. After you've snugged them, we'll continue torquing these to 22 Newton meters. Now, once you've torqued each of these to 22 Newton meters, continue on with your wiring harnesses.
We'll take this small one and slide it into place. Listen for a click. Give it a tug. That feels good. Continue on to your larger one. Slide that in. Listen for that click. Give that a tug as well. Now let's carefully raise our transfer case into its original position. Now let's flex our heat shield back into position, line up our mounting bolt hole, and put in our mounting bolt. Make sure your heat shield's secure. Now let's grab our cross member. We're going to attempt to align all four of our mounting bolts that go through the cross member, holding it to the body. We'll start in all four of the mounting bolts, but not tighten them. Now let's pause on this, leaving them loose, and we'll continue on with our through bolt that comes through from this bracket into the other that's attached to the transfer case. Just guide it through with my finger here. Now it is possible that you may either need to raise or lower the transfer case to get this to line up properly. Just keep that in mind. Make sure we start that in by hand. You definitely do not want to cross thread this in. Let's make sure this is nice and tight. Now that we have all of these started in, we'll bottom them out and then we'll torque each of them to 21 Newton meters. Now we're going to torque our 18 millimeter through bolt to 78 newton meters. Now once you have everything torqued accordingly, continue on by removing your supporting jack. Okay friends, we got the car back together. At this point, go ahead and slide out from underneath it. Start up the vehicle, take it for a road test, and make sure it functions properly. Thanks for watching.